Father God, I just lift up the service on today, Father God. Father God, have your way. We already know that you are here, Father yes. God. Move, Father God, as you will move, Father God, through each and every one of us, Father God. Thank you, Father God, for just blessing, Father God, us once again, Father God. Thank you, Lord, for just every song that's going to go forth on today, Father God. Father God, I just lift up each and every person that's here, Father God, even those that's watching, Father God, over the internet, Father God, even those that had a mind that was not able to make it, Father God. Father God, I just lift up our pastors, Father God, I ask you, Lord, to continue to pour into them, Father God, continue, Father God, to just stir up the gift, Father God, in them. Father God, continue to stir the gift in all of us, Father God. Father God, if any of us are lacking, Father God, wisdom or in our faith, Father God, that we could come boldly to the throne of grace, Father God, that you are our help, Father God. You are everything, and you are a big God, Father God. Father God, I even lift up the word that's going to go forth today. Declare, Father God, that it falls on good ground, Father God, that we will apply that word, Father God, to our life, Father God, that we will share your word, Father God, that we will never be ashamed of you, Father God, because you are the one, Father God. You are our source, Father God. You are our everything, Father God. Anything that we need, Father God, we can trust you, Father God. We can depend, we can rely on you, Father God, because you are a big God and you are awesome God, Father God. And Father God, if you declare, Father God, that the blessings will be upon us, Father God, that we don't have to go through sickness, Father God, that we can just come to you, Father God, that we can stand on your word, Father God. Father God, that you are everything, Father God. I just declare and I decree, Father God, that you manifest your gifts, Father God, in here, Father God, that we are a church on the move, Father God, that we're not a stagnated church, Father God, but we are a church, Father God, that's moving as you move, Father God, that we have pastors, Father God, that's standing, Father God, on your word, Father God, that's not sugarcoating, Father God, that's not wavering, Father God, but Father God, that's bold, Father God, just doing what you will have us to do. In Jesus' name, yes, thank God, and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The scripture is coming from James chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves to 
therefore unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee. Yes, yes. Flee from you. May the Lord, Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. Yes. Amen. Take your seat. Amen. Amen. Yes, yes. Amen. Hallelujah. No, 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 no. Don't do that. You did the wrong thing already. Musician messing up already this morning. Oh, yeah. Yeah, take your seat. We're going to have our announcements before we go into praise and worship. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Um, so today's announcements, um, Bible study will be Tuesday and Thursday at noon, um, and Wednesday at 7. Friday prayer is 12, 12, 15 on the conference, or the conference call line is 720-820-1376. Corporate prayer is second Mondays at 7 p.m. And um, we'd like for you guys to join us for the 25th anniversary, celebrating Pastor Alan and Ann Myrick. And that's going to be their 25th wedding anniversary. And that's Saturday, January 13th, 2018 at 4 p.m. It's going to be located at the Light Christian Church, 7257 East Southgate Drive, Sacramento, 95823. Dinner will also be served. You can RSVP to 916-821-8386 by December 30th. 2017. And you can do your Easy Tithe um, through your smartphone at easytithe.com slash nccsac. Also a reminder, please turn off your cell phones or silent mode during service. Also do not walk during prayer, reading of scripture, altar call, and communion. Amen. 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 Uh, you reminded me and I really <laughs> <laughs> So she said, <laughs> 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 but we get ready to have, we, I, we're going to praise God. We're going to give him glory, yes, honor, yeah. yes, and praise. That's I, I just keep on saying it that way today.
a little bit because I've said it before, I'll say it again, and I'll continue to say it until I can't say it no more. When, when you pray, God sends help, but when you pray, when you worship, He shows up. When you need Him to come be in the middle of it right now, begin to worship. And so I need you to take your mind off of whatever it is because see, God already knows what it is. He knows your needs before you even ask for them, but He does need you to ask about it. But right now, we're going to worship. I need you to get your mind off of everything else and just start thinking about
right now for what he's already done. Because see, he's done so much. He has done so very much. When you were thank you, Jesus. When people turned their backs on you and they loved on you, God said, I, I got you. Every time people thought they had uh, hallelujah. Those who talked about you, you still were walking. God still held your head up. He still gave you the strength to stand in the middle of it all. He gave you strength to fight in the middle of it all. Sometimes you were fight, you were fighting on your knees, but there were times. Oh, thank you, Lord. For all you've already done. If I just go ahead and look at just the material things, how you gave me a roof. You gave, you gave me the activities of my limb. You gave me a sound mind. You gave me so much. Hallelujah. And I didn't learn it. And you just gave it because you love me. You gave it to me because you love me.
Hallelujah. Yes, God is awesome. Praise God. Anybody feel the presence of the Lord in the house now? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I might have thought I had lost my mind when I said a little heavy in here. Now we got yes, praise God. And we can give God praise because he is here. We can give him glory because he is here. Hallelujah. And we're going to give God one big old shout of praise because we need, because see, because we're going to thank him because we know he already showed up and he's already showing out in our situation. Yes, we already know that he's showing out in our circumstance. We know that he is already taking care of everything that we need him to take care of. Why? Because we worship. Yes. And we, he knows what we need. And he knows our, our oh gosh, I ain't going to go through there Come right on, now. Man. Come on, we're going to give God a hand. We're going to give him a shout of praise. We're going to give him a hand of praise Woo! because he is glorious. We're going to give him a shout of praise because he is worthy. We Okay, everybody over here already know what I'm looking for. Okay, we're going to rattle. We go. Okay. Undignified, okay, undignified. Let me say that one more time. Undignified. That means because you know what God, what you need from God. You know what you're expecting. You know what you're expecting Him to do. Amen. And when it shows up, you're not going to sit there and go, oh, thank you, God. <laughs> and because. <laughs> okay, and you're not going to, oh, hallelujah, God. No, you're not going to do that. <laughs> Everything that you need, God has. We walk by faith and not by sight. That means that we are expecting God to go ahead and do what it is he, we're asking, what we need him to do. We're expecting it. We're expecting the victory. We're expecting God to go ahead and do, show up in a mighty way in our life. And we're going to praise him in advance, okay? We're going to give him that shout of victory. Like, like everything that you need has already showed up. Like every, every dollar that you need is already in the bank. That every issue, every... <laughs> Every spirit that needed to be delivered from has already happened, okay? Amen. All of that deliverance has already taken place. All of that because, see, God has already done. You just haven't caught up with it yet. Amen. But because we know that God is, and we know that God can, we're going to shout to get a, a victory shout, just like you saw. It's the last minute of the game. And, well, it's just, uh, no, don't, don't get there. Okay, we're going to shout <laughs> <laughs> God, a victory. Oh gosh. In the name of Jesus, on a shout of three, I mean, you shout like, I want you to shout like you have yes. lost your mind because he gave you that un that unbelievable miracle that you're looking Woo! for, okay? Yes. Like you lost your mind, undignified, don't care who's looking at you, don't care who's got anything to say about it, okay? On the count of three, one, two, three, go. <laughs> like yeah 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 and I, I mean I'm and, and I love sports and I'll just say yes but when it comes to the Lord it's like I don't I don't raise my hand and worship any players I worship yes. the Lord Praise God. I thank the Lord for all the privileges and things that he has given to us you know he didn't have to I mean even you know entertaining things he didn't have to do that but we don't serve a boring God. Right. He said, I'm going to give you some the desires of your heart. I'm going to give you things that you haven't even imagined. So some of us haven't seen the things that he has already prepared for us. Yeah. Eyes have not seen. 
Remember that scripture? Eyes have not seen. Now guess what? And here's another guess what? The scripture after that, too many people stop when they read. You got to read the whole story. Because the next scripture he says, but he has given it to, to who? He's given it to us. That, so why would you stop and only get half the story? The Lord wants you to get the whole story. Amen. More than just the hope. But the manifestation of the things that you desire. Yes. So, as long as you continue to pursue God, guess what? Those things are on the way because you're on your way toward them. Yes. Amen. Amen. So, the word today, I want you to be attentive. The word today is going to be brought by our own minister, Dion Thomas. And for the children, it have children's church in, in the back. Uh, Program oh, Christmas pro program too, okay. Rehearsal. Rehearsal. And so, Come on, so you all want to be a part of that? You're welcome today. to join us. Go, go in the back. If you like right to, you can. If you don't have to, you don't want to. And, and so let's give the Lord a hand praise for the word that's coming forth at this time. Amen. Can I lean on this? Do you want to find Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How's everybody doing? Awesome. God is good, man. I'm breathing. As long as I'm breathing, I'm okay. That means whatever they did get accomplished yesterday can be accomplished today. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, that's fine. That's perfect. How's everybody this morning? Blessed. Blessed. Good, 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 good. I'm waiting for Brother Tico. You can sit that right there in the front so he can come get a look at it. You know me, I'm always got some props. I'm visual. That's how I learn. That is how I learn. I guess Pastor Andy started the song. I'm going to sing a little bit of it, but I'm going to pray first, okay? Gracious Father, we come boldly before the throne of grace to give you glory, honor, and praise. We exalt you for being God all by yourself. We thank you, Father, for your humbleness, uh, your precious blood, your love, your kindness, forgiving us over and over again. But I thank you most of all, Holy Spirit, that you would have your way. I surrender. I, as, as my parents would say, I decrease so you can increase. Amen. It's about you, Holy Spirit, that you would just take total control over this situation. Because it's about you. It's not about me. It's not about the clothes. It's not about the hair. It's not about the jewelry. It's not about being seen. It's about you, God, and your glory. This might be my story, but this is your glory that I put back in your hands. And I place back to you. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> A change, a change has come over me. I don't know where the music is. She, she got it over there, so I'm sorry, y'all. It's okay. It says, um, he changed my life in Washed away all my sins, and he's made me oh He washed me white as snow. He changed. And now I sit, I sit at his feet to do what must be done. I work and work until he comes. A wonderful change has come up.
rested at his feet to do what must be done. I'll work and work until he comes. I'm going to stop right there because this means so much to me. Because when I was nine years old, I got saved. I know nothing about it. I just know they said, come up to the front. And when you're little, you're obedient. Back in that time, I'm not saying the children aren't today, but when they said sit down, you sit down. They said, be quiet, you be quiet. When they tell you to come up to the front, if this is what you want, you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you do just that. It's not of obedience. It's not about anything else. And I'm going to tell you, I didn't realize until I was 14 and I heard this song from Tremaine Hawkins. Like, what? I know what my grandparents is talking about now. I can't imagine what they were before, but I know what they are like today. Amen? And I'm sorry, y'all. I really would have did the whole song, but I just couldn't get through it. I just couldn't get through it. But, um... Y'all just gonna have to forgive me. Charge it to my head and not to my heart. Amen? Amen. So today we're gonna talk about worship. Now, we go to the altar. Okay, this is my picture in the closet. This is this is the Lord. When we go to worship. So when you go to worship, you get to empty out. The bills. This us. Yes, it's a shot glass. I own some. This us. And we come in here heavy. We come in here overflowing heavy. But when we worship, we don't always let it all out. And it just keeps pouring and pouring our bills, our responsibilities, our personal life, what's going on in our marriages. But if we just come before the Lord, empty that all out each time we come to worship. Do we have room to receive? We got room to receive now. Now mind you, when we worship, it's not about because somebody else tells you to do it. It's not about obeying the pastor. It's not about who's sitting next to you. You get full during the week. We full. Got to change jobs, household, move, rent going up, people acting crazy. And we full. We come to worship. We lift our hand before the Lord. Can you see, sweetie? And we empty ourselves out before God. Does he not have room for us? Does he not have room for us each time we get full? Because we can do this about three, four more times. This shot glass. Every time we get full, we come to worship. That means we leave all our cares behind. We empty ourselves out. Amen. So again, if we're empty, can he fill us? Yes. Amen. So today we're going to talk about worship again. Uh, somewhere I got glasses. Amen. Amen. Y'all pray for you, sister. I'm getting it together. I'm getting it together. <laughs> glasses. Oh, they dirty. All right, that's what happens when you get too many pairs. When you get door seasoned. And you don't need reading glasses, you got three or four pairs. One in the car, one in the house, one at your desk. Amen? Okay, so just for the word worship, in the Old Testament it shows up at least 100 times. And Strong's concordance is satcha, which means, this term literally means to depress or prostate oneself. Now back in the Bible days, over 2,000 years ago. When they worshiped, they didn't do as we did today. They did their different. Excuse me. They laid out before God. Straight out. Head here, feet here. Tico has seen me on Sunday morning before, in the back, on the floor, on the carpet, eating some dust, because I need to empty out. That's where my worship is with me, with God and I. Because, like, again, if I'm full, I got everything on my mind, what can I hear from God? 
I'm not coming to worship. Nothing, right? So again, I got to empty out. Because remember, he still got room. Now remember, when this gets full, he's going to empty it out. The angel going to take it away. It's going to be empty just for you. Amen? Amen? So, and also in Strong's Dictionary, excuse me, in Ezra 4, I don't think I gave you these, Khalil. Ezra 4 and 2 and 6 and 2, it translates to the, to the meaning of seek as worship. Yare in the Strong's in Joshua 22 and 25 translate this term in meaning to fear as in to worship. You know, you hear my songs, my worship is for real. Is it really? Or is it mechanical? So, worship is the submission of all of our nature to God. That means everything that's going on inside of us. We darken it out. It's the quickening of our conscience by His holiness, not our own. The nourishment of the mind, of His truth, not mine, not yours. The purifying of the imagination of, the, of his beauty. <sighs> so let's talk about beauty. I'm going to stop just for a second. Satan was the, one of the highest ranking angels. And when he walked everything, cling, oh, cling, oh, oh, different notes, different sopranos. When he walked, everything was gone. God knew where he was at all times. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's worship. That was his form of worship. Now, mind you, he did get a big head got thrown out, but still, he worshiped, right? Amen? That's in the beauty of God's holiness, because God said, I made this one. I want this one to sing like this. I want this one to do like that. I want this one. He made you in the beauty so you can come and just release everything that's inside of you so you can receive what he has for you. Amen? That's his beauty, beauty of his worship. It says, the opening of your heart to his love. Now, we know God loves us way more beyond than we can love anybody else, right? Because I can't love you more than God. <clears throat> I can't. I can't. I, I might try, but I can't. <sighs> it says, the surrendering of, of will to his purpose. That means, okay, God, whatever this is, you can have it. What's your purpose for me? How many remember when you turned in your homework assignment in school? You surrendered what you had to go outside and do some recess. Oh, they still do recess? Oh, no, I've been in high school, middle school a long time. They still do recess, PE, something, quiet time, library, something, right? Yes. But you had to do your homework first. But you had to give something up, right? So once we gave, the, gave that thing up, we could receive. And I keep going there because the Holy Spirit keeps going with me, amen? It says, the most selfless emotion of which nature is capable of. That means man, us, me, you. It says, and therefore the chief remedy for the self-centeredness. Now see, when we worship, I got to find these other scriptures. When we worship, we are selfless. We have given up everything we had, right? Because if we still holding on to stuff, we, we ain't going to get, we still going to be full, right? And we need to be empty. We need to be empty before the Lord, right? Yes. And if we empty, we can receive. Amen? Yes. I have some other scriptures that I wanted to share because there are so many ways to worship. And I emailed it to myself just in case I would lose a piece of paper, and I probably did. Um, it says, which is our original sin and our source of all actual sin, self-centeredness. The purpose of our worship is to glorify, honor, praise, exalt, and most of all, please God. Amen? Our worship must show adoration and loyalty to God for his grace and providing us in the way to escape a bondage and sin. So that we, we can have our salvation. He wants us to get, he wants us to have so much. The very nature of, of worship 
God demands it in prostration of our souls before him in humble and contrite heart. That means in submission. That means, God, forgive me for what I have done. I, I'm sorry. I regret it. But I need to give you all that I got. Because, see, when we worry about the bills that's going to get paid, been getting paid the last 22, 52, 32, 25 years, we let go. Because that means, wait a minute, my daddy, wait, my da if my daddy can take all my stuff in here and still take care of me when I'm empty, that's some awesome worship. Because we're selfless. We ain't worried about the bills. We ain't worried about who shot John. We ain't worried about who lied on us. We ain't worried about who called him on a fight with us. We ain't worried about, okay, God, I ain't got enough food to last me to the first of the month. But, you know, sometimes we go through that. Or they cut my food stamps off. Let's just be real about the situation. See, when they cut your food stamps off, that's the time when you're going to trust God. Because he is going to provide for you. You're looking at somebody they cut me off to. Long time ago. But God has been provided. My children are happy and healthy. They got everything they need. And I had to learn to worship God when things was going crazy. Oh my God. Just this week alone, I'm telling on myself. Just this week alone, I had a friend that I've been friends with since first grade. I'm 52. That's six years old. You do the math. Ball me out. Say nothing. Hung up the phone. I ain't say nothing. Now, if y'all know me, I got a sharp tongue. If y'all know me when I'm mad, it hat backwards, the hood girl comes out. It's, excuse me? All of that saveness. I'm still saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. Sometimes I have to say, okay, Holy Spirit, I'm going to put you on pause. Don't be mad at me. That's me talking because even though he's still inside of me, I'd be ready to put him on pause. But I said, no, nope, i got to go worship. God, I thank you. You hurt my feelings. <laughs> you know I'm done. I forgive her, God. I can't deal with this no more. I'm tired. I don't want to go through this year after year. I don't want to be tripping with no head trips. God, I worship you. And sometimes we got to get on our knees when it says, it's like, Lord Jesus, deliver me. I had enough. I can't take no more. God, I bless you. I worship you. I adore you. When you get like that, then you know it's real. I'm, I'm selfless. I'm on the floor. I'm on my knees. I ain't worried about my clothes. I ain't worried about the floor. That's when your worship is for real before God. And I'm not asking you to lay out and fall out before God. But I'm just saying when you come to God, when you want that worship and you want to get up, get that adoration and give him the glory, just move out of yourself. Forget about who's watching. Why do you care? They ain't paying your bills. How about go even deeper? Do they have a switch to turn the air on so you can breathe? That's what I'm saying. Amen. Right, do, does somebody, I don't know nobody with a switch. You know somebody with a switch? So why are we worried about what people think when we worship? Forget who's coming in here. Get yours so you can go out and be happy. And when people ask you, oh, we have worship service on Sunday morning. Let me tell you, God had his way. Yada bako yet. Start speaking to talk. Let them know. They be like, oh, I want to go where you at. Because you're free. Worship is very free. Very, very free. Why do we worship? We worship. It is a time that we pay deep, sincere, awesome respect, love, and fear for the man who created us. Elohim, El Shaddai, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisei. I don't care what you want to call him because he's God to me. And let me be in a dire need, Daddy. <laughs> huh? Daddy, I got an issue. My flesh might be tripping because, see, I'm, I'm the first one to say that. My flesh gets to tripping and I'll be like, Daddy, I need help because I'm ready to snatch your wig off. Daddy, I need help. I'm ready to suck him in the face. Daddy, I need help. I'm ready to throw my shoe at them because I'm tired of them messing with me. See, I have no problem coming to God like that because he already know. <laughs> Dion going through something. Let's hear what she got to say. He shows up. That's what happens most of all. He shows up. He shows up. On Acts 17, please. Am I in the way? Because I'm so I'm moving. 
Anybody getting anything? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Praise the Lord. Acts 17, 24, and 25. Oh. Whatever, Clary. Wait a minute. Y'all know I'm going to put that Okay. I'm going to read it from my little piece of paper. Is that all right? It says, God who made the world and everything in it, since he is the Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. Wait, wait. Come on now. Wait, wait. You mean tell me he ain't, dwell, he, he ain't dwelling in the building? Mm -hmm. You the temple. I'm the temple. So he dwells within us, right? Just remember that. You take him with you everywhere you go. As though, he, as though he needed anything since he gave us life, breath, and all things. God who made the world and everything in it, since he is the Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in a temple made with hands, although, as, although he needed anything since he gave. He gives us life, breath, and all things. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. He dwells in me, so that means I got earth eyes. Right? He dwells within me. So that means I have everything. That means I have healing. I am blessed mentally, physically, financially, socially, and emotionally. Wait a minute, that covers everything. Because he dwells within me. Because I worship. I'm not afraid to tell God, thank you, I got a discount at the store. Because see, y'all know I like to shop, don't play. Y'all know I like to shop. It ain't, it ain't got to be for me, I like to shop. That's just me. Just like your habit might be, ooh, I need some new chocks or some Jordans. Or, ooh, I like them shoes. Come on now. We, we got to be honest. We, we, God blesses us with those things, but we still have to worship him and not the things. Amen? Amen. All right. Let's go to Isaiah 25 and 1. I'm going to try to get through this really quick. Let me know when you're there. I'm there. Okay, praise God. It says, Lord, you are my God. I will exalt and praise your name. For in perfect faithfulness, you have done wonderful things planned long ago. That means in our worship, because we faithful, he faithful. And even when we ain't faithful, he's still faithful. It says in your perfect faithfulness. You have done wonderful things planned long ago. That means before you even got here, he had planned for what he was going to do for you. Now, there are times we follow our own plan and end up in a ditch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Been there. And being so, I was not in his plan or his will. I'm talking about me. But I learned his plan is like this. You're narrow, can't go out there lines. Okay, just getting bored and everybody leave me where my friend's at, but I'm still in his plan. But everything is coming to me. But I can still say, God, thank you. Because he said in his perfect, perfect faithfulness. I mean, he, he got you. I planned this before you was born, before your parents got together, before your grandparents got together, and your grandparents and your grandparents got together. Because when Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob came along, Abraham came, Abraham, Abraham, is that how it, Abraham? It went from Abram to Abram, right? All right, father of many nations. You mean to tell me if my granddaddy Abraham gave Lot some things. Did he not give Lot some land? You mean to tell me in his selflessness he gave Lot some land? And I'm telling you why I'm telling you this. He still had more. He was one of the richest men in the Bible through your history. And the reason why I brought that up is because if God made it for Abraham, he didn't plan it for you? Okay, I'm just checking. Maybe it's just me, but I want it all. Amen, amen. I'm going to get it all. I will have it all. Amen? Because of his faithfulness and his plans that he had for me way back when Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, there wasn't no Bluetooth, no TV, no cable, no network, no dish, no 
with a USB stick, no cell phone. He had a plan for me. And it's all a part of the worship. Because Abraham worshiped God. He worshiped God with a sacrifice for his son. And God still put a ram in the bush. He's like, okay, Dad, I'm giving up my firstborn, God. Elohim. He was probably calling him every name and on his knees. But God still blessed him because he was faithful. That was his form of worship. Worship can be standing, it can be kneeling, it can be singing, it can be in song. Some people like to, when they say they worship, they meditate, they're quiet. They don't do it. Y'all check, check back with me in 24 hours. You ain't got to tell nobody you worship in between you and God. Because whatever you need, like I said, you're going to empty out. And he's going to fill you up. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Amen. It says, when do we worship? Acts 16 and 25, please. Because we already went over the why we worship. I'm going to talk about when we worship. You ready, Mr. Khalil? Okay, because I can't see that. That's blurry. No, I can't see that. Right. That's blurry. <laughs> I'm just honest. It's blurry. Um, it says, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to who? To God. And the other prisoners were listening to them. Wait a minute. I'm in jail. It might not be a physical prison. It can be a mental prison. Because that mental prison, fear can be a jail. Yes. Doubt and unbelief can be a jail. There's a lot of things that could be a jail. Because jail don't have to have four walls and a bar. It don't have to be three hots and a cot. Or eight by eight. Not like I've never been. I just, just like y'all, I got folks. Okay? So that, that prison that we're in... God, I trust you. I'm not going to operate in fear. I will no longer be in fear about anything that you have for me. This fear is a prison. False evidence appearing real. Well, he should. Nah. Because it actually goes the other way. That prison, you got to kick the doors down, you and the angels. Kick them doors down. Don't be in fear of being afraid. I'd rather, okay, so I'm single. <laughs> Tell y'all single. And uh, people would say, you, you ain't married yet? Nope, I ain't got to marry the right one. Because I can marry anybody. <laughs> Believe me, I get proposals. But it's like, nope, I'm good. Thank you. Hallelujah. That's it. But I have learned I'd rather be single and have the things of God right on my inside. So when I do approach that person that comes into my world, I got my stuff together. And they got their stuff together too. And if they don't, I can tell them, bye, Felicia. You can't tell them. Because, see, we're afraid to tell people bye because we're so worried about being alone. I am never alone. I got all y'all. I got the Holy Spirit. I got my family on the East Coast. And God knows if I call them and something wrong, even my extended family, they will be on this plane. Do you understand what I'm saying? If there's a problem. But I learned it's okay to be single and be by myself. Because I'm not alone. I'm by myself. I got a daughter. I got a son. Grandbabies one day. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But in the meantime, I'm not afraid. I don't allow of me of being alone to put myself in prison. Because while I'm alone, God is working on the inside of me while I'm worshiping in this crazy prison I got to get out of. You can do things by yourself. I go to movies by myself. I go get my hair done by myself. I go get my feet done by myself. I do a whole bunch of stuff by myself. I don't let something good come out in the movies. I'm the first one in the theater. Got me a good seat. I might be. Oh, my pastor's here. <laughs> and put my feet up. You know what I'm saying? Coming with slippers and the sweats. Ain't nobody gonna see me. And they be like, oh, praise the Lord. You be like, oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Come on now. And, and don't be afraid. There's nothing for you to fear except for God. 
So the Bible says, what can man do to me? Nothing. What the hammer say? Can't touch this? What's that other one, Jay-Z? Shake that off your shoulders. Get your dust off your shoulders. They can't do nothing to me. I keep telling folks, forget who my daddy is. All I got to do is go and worship. He's going to show up. And the minute he show up, them angels, they like on duty. They with you 24-7. Don't let them get fat and lazy. Because when you worship, and you tell God what it is, they clean up the mess. Yes, they do. And whatever you need is coming. Because God said, I'm here. I'm here now. What you need, baby? Your grandbaby spanking me. Oh, what's the matter? Grandma's here. Come on. Now. What's, what's the matter? That's the same way it is when you worship. Whether it's on your knees, prayer closet, bathroom, kitchen. I get to worship in that after the sink, washing dishes. I get to crying in my door as I go, God, here she go again. <laughs> but I'm washing. Thank you, Jesus. Just in there. But that's where he talks to me. That's my spot of worship in my house. Now, I love to come and worship with you guys because you know what? That gives me strength. That's why we worship in this place. Yes. It's not about listening to Pastor Allen, although we obey him because he is a leader. Because the Bible says you'll obey those who have ruled over you. So if somebody in a position to ask you to do something, just do it. Don't, don't mumble. Watch your blessings come. Amen? Amen. So because he's here and they tell us to worship Pastor Allen and Pastor Andy, I'm just bad now. Um... <clears throat> The Allens, the Myricks, we won't call them today. <laughs> the A and A. Uh, <laughs> they encourage us to worship because it breaks barriers. It gives me strength. That means I can link up with my dad, and if I'm going through, I can say, "Oh, I'm worshiping," and he can lift me up. That's what worship does. It links us together. It gives us strength as a body. Why you think they tell you to come to corporate worship? Not because they want to see you, because they just saw you Sunday. Mm -hmm. And you probably don't want to see them either. Thank you, sir. But that's what that does. That's what that does for us. So when Paul and Silas, man, it was in prison. Don't let stuff imprison your mind, your heart, and your spirit. Don't be afraid to lose weight. Go to the gym, dye your hair, cut it off. Don't be afraid. Be free. Because he came here so you can have abundant life here on this earth. So worship is a part of abundant life because when you worship, he shows up. If you could just think of chair. <laughs> okay, Lord. What he's showing me right now is there is been her chariots. I see, I see chariots, I see angels, I see folks lined up. And I mean folks, I mean you, you angels lined up. I see them, and I'm telling you, sure as my sure as God is on the throne. I see angels lined up, just waiting. That's right. It's like a row of them. If you've yeah. ever seen one of those movies where uh, 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 when Moses was going to part the Red Sea, you seen Pharaoh and his army come, and it was a crew of them. That's how the angels are. They they from right to left, and God is in the center, and He just wait. So as again, nah, that's it. Y'all don't even understand where I'm at. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. You have so much to gain with worship. You have so much to gain with worship. Don't let nobody stop you in worship. If you gotta go in the bathroom at your job and they're acting a fool, say, I take your, put yourself on your personal time, go find a bag stall and go in there and worship and tell God thank you. Because I can tell you how many times I did it at Verizon Wireless in five years. And God showed up. I'm so sorry. Um, I know you're going to God. I should have said that to you. Can you forgive me? All is well. Don't tell me you won't show up. Amen? Amen? When things are dry in your life, there's a desert season in your life. Mm -hmm. Well, quickly as I possibly can, I have one more page. There's a desert season in your life, and that's when things get dry. You be like, God, where you at? That's me. Where you at? I ain't heard from you. I ain't seen you. I have felt your presence. I know you're here, but where are you at? But they say when the teacher is quiet, he working. Amen? So I'm going to take you to where, where the, the fig tree. Y'all remember the fig tree? And Jesus cursed the fig tree. Jesus was something else. He cursed the fig tree. Uh, he said, there, there's, a, there's a scripture that says, 
and Habakkuk 2, uh, 3, excuse me, 17 and 18. It says, though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vine, though there's no olive crops and the fields produce no food, there are no sheep in the pen, no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be, I will be joyful in God my Savior. Well, you don't see no fruit and you're doing everything you're supposed to do. God, I'm worshiping, I'm paying my tithes, I'm giving my offering, I'm treating people right, I'm living right according to your word. Okay, God, where is that? Don't act like I'm the only one to be like, wait, God, God damn it's a little dry in here. Let the night just smear. What you need is some oil. What you need me to do? Because, see, sometimes we think we can help God. We can't. Not when it comes to worship, not when it's in a dry season. Our dry season makes us go, Oh Lord, we don't, we don't be on our knees, we on our face. Okay, God, it's dry. What you doing? God, you already know my needs. Thank you. But God, I just need you to fix it. That's when it's dry. Ain't no job coming in. 401k is messing up with people, messing up with your money. You trying to start your, I don't know who it is, trying to start your nonprofit organization and they fooling with your paperwork. Be like, God, what's going on? I did A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then you want to cuss. L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, V, W, X, Y. Don't act like y'all don't. I'm saying, I'm real about mine when it comes to God. There's times I want to fuss. Because when it's dry, you want to cuss, you want to act the fool. And see, my form of cussing is saying outfits. Learn that from Pastor Ann, don't ask me. But just the same, in that dry season, I still got to say, God, thank you. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what you didn't do. I don't know what happened. I did everything I'm supposed to do, God. I trust you. It's looking, it's dry, God. It's dry. Just like them dry bones. Come on, God. Where you at? Instead of us whining and complaining, we got worship. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now, Daniel 4, 3, and 37. Daniel 4 and 37. I'm going to read it to you. It says, Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and exalt and glorify the King of Heaven. Now, wait a minute. I'm going to give you a little backstory. You don't know who Nebuchadnezzar is. And some of y'all have seen the Veggie Tales. He's a bunny man. He wanted to worship the chocolate bunny. <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar acted a fool. Y'all heard of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And I think their real names are Hananiah, Han Han Nazariah, and something, something, something. Don't make me lie. Anyway, you snow off the top off my head. I'm going to have to brush up. They wanted, they actually wanted, Nebuchadnezzar wanted them to bow down and worship him. He's like, no. That Daniel was like, no. The saints was like, no. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was like, no. I ain't going to do it. I'm going to worship my God. Nebuchadnezzar the act of fool. They came out of the fiery furnace. But Nebuchadnezzar grew fierce. They said he started looking like a bird. Can you imagine your hair all dreaded up? Not that I'm saying anything bad. I'm just saying at the time your hair all dreaded up, you're funky, you're stinky, you got you got feathers. No, because I never want to offend anybody because I know how I am. I'm just saying at that time, you know, they fly. But at that time, you know, they, they was looking at him like, What's wrong with you? You look like a bird. You got a beak. You got feathers. Your hair is a mess. <laughs> what you done did, Nebuchadnezzar? Mm. So we bowed down and worship God. This whole mind changed. That's where the scripture comes from. He said, because everything he does is right and all his ways are just. And those who walk in pride, he is able to humble. Yes, that's yes. So wait a minute, Nebuchadnezzar had to learn to humble himself because he was, you know, he thought he was, mm, you can't tell me nothing. I'm the king. I'm going to tell you what to do and how to do it. I got them people over here dyeing my hair and fixing my clothes. And, and Nebuchadnezzar, he probably didn't. Okay, Jesus, let me get that right. Nebuchadnezzar never had to do anything for yourself. He let your imagination for a while, okay? Never had to do nothing for himself. So it's amazing how the same person 
why did Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to worship him? And God changed their whole situation because they trusted God in worship. We talk about in fire. In fire, we ain't talking about no flicking a big fire. We talking about roasting flame fire, bushes. Ain't no pond nearby to put the fire out. It was a prison for them. Hello. It was a prison for them. Fire. They came out with not a hair singed. Not one. Why? Because they worship the God who? Elohim. El Shaddai. Amen? It says, you are my God. It says, you are my God. Earnestly, I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry, parched land where there is no water. Oh, God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsts for thee. My flesh longs for, for thee in a dry, thirsty land where there is no water. Psalm 63. said, so the Lord will rescue me <laughs> in an evil attack and will bring me be safely to his heavenly kingdom to him be the Lord forever and ever amen that means when you're going through what you're going through God said I got you when it's dry I got you when it's cold I got you all he wants you to do is keep worshiping while you're getting what you get amen because sometimes we get that house we get that car we get that husband we don't come to church right we get that new job we don't come to church we got that in the boot with you like, yeah. And God be like, okay. I'll see you in a little while. Amen? Because sometimes people attack us and say some nasty words. I've had some people attack me and say some nasty words right in my face. In church. Because everybody going to church has not been delivered because they do not want deliverance. It's not they cannot get it. Worship. As part of deliverance because when you can let go God can come in that's why a pastor has these laymen and pastors and apostles and prophets and deacons and teachers and ministers to help you get where you need to go because my old pastor used to say you got ten more Dion's right behind you mm -hmm. so as soon as you get yours you can help them get theirs amen, amen. pastor didn't want to be a pastor he got to deal with somebody who didn't want to be a pastor either because mm -hmm. I didn't want to be in church all my family's in church, grandfather, great-grandfather, pastor, prophet, apostle, psalmist. I didn't want to do this. I was like, oh, no. You want me to sing? Mm. Hmm. Let Jennifer do it. She got a better voice than me. That's my younger cousin. Because all of them say. I ain't ne never. That's why today my daughter said pigs going to fly. <laughs> but, you know, that's your children. Because I opened my mouth. But praise God. You understand what I'm saying? My whole point is, during our worship, during our dry place, while we're being attacked, while people acting crazy, while it's dry, God is saying, worship me. That's all he's saying to you. Just worship me. Just worship me. Because people are going to do some crazy stuff, even when you worship and you just say, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, and keep on going, because they still going to be out there, and you still going to be going where you need to go. Amen? Um... The effects of worship, Exodus 23 and 25 says, Worship the Lord your God, and his blessings will be on your food and your water. So thank you, Father, for our food. God receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't we bless our food? Amen. Don't we bless our water? Amen. And he says, I will take away sickness among you. Hmm. Among you. That means she sick, you sick, he sick, he sick, he sick. He sick. You heal, you heal, you heal, you heal, you heal. Because I bless your food and your water. I'm letting you know when you worship me, I'm going to bless your food and your water. That means whatever the doctor said you got, God can heal it. Yes. We got cancer survivors. I got a friend who got healed from HIV, full-blown AIDS. I have a child at home, two of them. One of them was never supposed to make it here because my car got towed up. I was, my car was on his knees when I was nine months. Engaged to be married nine months. He never, he, they was like, he's got out without a scratch. Don't tell me what God will do. My daughter, prime example, she's gonna be mad at me, she's gonna be over. She was six and a half months old. 
She had bilateral pneumonia, septic shock, right on your feet, at five years. Me and her heart stopped seven times at six and a half months old as a baby. They told me she was going to die. The priest was in my daughter's room, and I kicked him out. He thought I was some crazy girl. I said, get out! He was like, the nurse came, Miss Thomas, Miss Thomas. I said, get this man out of my room. My daughter's not dying. She got a prom to go to. I got college graduation. I got weddings. I got grandbabies. She got to bury me and take care of me when I get old. What are you talking about? I ain't trying to hear that. They said, who is this crazy girl from California? Because remind me, I'm in Detroit, Michigan. Henry Ford Hospital. Where is she at today? Don't tell me God ain't no healer. In her right mind. But if I didn't take the time to go up at 4 o'clock in the morning while she was sleeping and while that nurse was working on her 16 hours, if I didn't go upstairs to the 11th floor, 4th floor, 4th floor, and worship and put time in that temple, you mean to tell me God wasn't going to fix what he said he was going to fix? He wasn't going to be God? And said it in his word. He said his word should not return unto him void, but set out what it's accomplished to do. So whatever God said he's going to do in your life is coming. Right. So worship. worship. Amen? Amen? All right. This is my last scripture. I'm going to get up out of here. Um, it says, praise to the Lord, to our God, our Savior, who bears our burdens. Blessed be the Lord, who daily loads up, loads us up with benefits. Even the God of our salvation. See, Lot, that is Psalm 68 and 19. God shows up when we worship. There's benefits to worship God. Don't worship God because somebody tell you to do it. Worship God because you need the, you need the benefits. Like at a job, I need all the benefits. I want them to. I want it all. So when we worship God, we give God our time and say, God, I thank you. It's looking crazy. Lord, because you know... <laughs> I am not afraid to tell people I serve God. Even in past buddies that you know from when you was in the club. I serve God now. What you mean? Spirit of the truth. This is 100. Matter of fact, it's 210. You let me tell it. 210% I'm serving God. I have to worship. Because my life depends on it. Because it said he breathed and give you all things. Not like he needed but we should. We should worship. So don't ever feel like you're worshiping because somebody else is telling you to worship. You worship because you know this is the right thing to do. I got benefits. That means he's going to come when it's dry. He's going to come when I'm when my mind is in prison. Because remember, prison does not exactly have a legal place. It can be in your heart. You might not want to open up and get hurt again. But you gotta, you got to come out of that prison. You gotta, you gotta worship God and allow Him to heal what's on the inside, cause He's still working on me. I tell Him, mm, get, get it out, cause it's gonna hurt, but get it out, hurry up, you know, like that splinter. Oh, hurry up, get it out, out, out. But at the same time, I tell God, thank you. I worship God. I worship God. Y'all see me in that corner by myself? I could be on the flow. Just wipe my face and help me up when I'm done, because I, I am a worshiper. I believe in worshiping God. I might not always sing. My voice will get better, y'all. Just give me time. I might not always sing. I might not always clap. But I will sit back in that corner and lift my hands before the Lord and worship. And even when I'm in pain, I sit down. That, that's where I'm leaning. Because when my body starts, i got to lean. But it's not going to stop me from serving God. No matter how crazy the weekend was and all the crazy stuff, I'm not going to stop. Mm -mm, no, no. I make it my business to be here. I make it my business to be here in corporate worship because I gain strength from each of you. So y'all worship, amen? Amen. Amen. We want to thank the Lord for that word. Yes, yes. Amen. 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 So what you're saying that it is critical about worship and not worrying about who's around you. Just like you know, you just you got you got you have to get it for yourself. That's what I'm saying. Yes. Regardless of what the situation is around you, 
are other people's perception. Because when it comes down to it, it's between us and the Lord Amen. individually. Can you imagine the Lord said, well, all you had to do was worship me. You get to heaven and said, well, Lord, I needed this happen. said, all you had to do was worship me. Except that you may have been in a place, you could have been visiting, and everybody is real quiet and silent. I didn't ask you, I didn't ask you to, act, to act like them. Mm -hmm. I don't care if people call you a renegade or a maverick. Okay. A maverick is a horse that just does its own thing. And I use this in some things on the internet. Instead of using my own name, I just, I had a nickname in high school. And I don't know how it got, well, I do know, but I'm not going to tell you how it got to Monk. But I, I started using Mavericks. I said, because, you know, a monk is a, you know, it's a church. But a Maverick is, I'm not worried about what anybody else is going to do. I'm going to do what God told me to do. Because when he called me the pastor, the Lord said, the Lord said, I want you to do what I want you to do. Not don't do what everybody else is doing. I don't want you to try and mimic anybody. I want you to be who I have called you to be. Amen. And so and so that's what I do. And and I was just laughing. I said, man, I said, well, I wore a tie today. You know why I wore a tie today? And a long sleeve shirt? Because it's cold. <laughs> I, I'm just being honest. When I grew up in LA, it could be 12 midnight. I've got I'm on the, I'm on the I-10 going from my friend's home house home. It's 12 midnight. I'm in my mom's station wagon. I've got all the windows down, even the gate, the tailgate window down. Got my t-shirt and jeans and tennis shoes heading home. But when I came up here to go to school. Nobody had to tell me, you need a t-shirt, a shirt, and a jacket, because it's too cold. So I was just dressing for the environment, you know, for, for health and safety reasons. But other than that, be who God called you to be. You know, you don't, you know, you dress appropriately, but you don't, you know, we don't come in here and we dressing suits. Some people can, that's great, you know. They're used to that, that's great. But I don't come to be a fashion show. Amen. You know, I just come, you know, come to worship the Lord. And I used to think about it, I says, man, I said, when I first got saved and we'd be worshiping, and the next thing you know, we're on the floor. And I, and then I said, you know what, I was in tennis shoes and jeans, it didn't matter, you know. But some folks said, no, don't get down there in your, your you know, what are you doing in your nice clothes? I said, well, if I'm worshiping the Lord, I'm just worshiping the Lord. I ain't care what I want. Amen. Right? Amen. So I'm Amen. saying, be yourself, but be who God called you to be. You know, he, he wants us to transform, transform our mind, our thinking, so that we take upon us the mind of Christ. And I think that's where they got that, what would Jesus do? Take upon you the mind of Christ. Now, he, we're all unique, and we do things Amen. our own, you know, the way God has told us to do it. Because sometimes you don't want to be, you don't want to be preaching, and then, and then when you're done, folks say, "Well, that wasn't preaching." You know, I, I didn't hear you hollering and, and grabbing your ear and <laughs> shaking your head and stuff like that. I don't get it. <laughs> Now I've heard people, but the ones I heard, this is to offend anybody, but the ones I heard, they always brought a word. It wasn't about rhyming, it wasn't about trying to say some snappy, popular quote. And I call those a flavor of the month club for folks who do that because it sounded good to someone else. Just just be yourself. You know, because you know, being a pastor and being invited places, I go places and I'm just going. In my, sometimes I'm going, you know, that was good. But other times I'm going, what are they doing? <laughs> and and the Lord is just telling me, 
I go and the Lord ministers to me. He says, I'm not asking you to be like that. I want you to give people what they need to hear when you preach or you teach. And that was great teaching. Great. And so that's what that's what, what I my desire is for all of our ministers to feed. When it says feed my sheep, he's just not talking about the preacher, he's talking about everyone. Even in our households. Feed my sheep. If you're the head of your household, live the way God expects you to live. And if it's if you if you're falling short in some area, just say, okay, Lord, I read this. You're telling me to do this. I never did this before. Lord, forgive me. Teach me. Or you can ask somebody, and only ask those people who are, who are mature. It, to me, it doesn't make any sense for someone to jump in a place you don't know them, they're just coming to the Lord, and try and do what they're telling you. Unless they have some good information, like they're in finance. Mm -hmm. You know, they can give you some good information because they've been in finance. That's different. But as far as living for the Lord, find someone, and the Bible really tells us, who's mature, but someone who's mature. Mm -hmm. Lord. But guess what? Whoever you go to, and they're giving you scriptures, back it up. Go and find it for yourself. Search the scriptures. Because you say, yes, they did say this. Yes, I did hear this in the word. It's making sense to me. And get the type of, you know, the, the version of the Bible that, that helps you. And what we do up here is we have the King James and we have the Amplified. And the reason we have the Amplified is because, and I like it, so they're just having fun back there. But when we get another building, that won't, won't be able to hear them. But, <laughs> but you know, I don't begrudge you from them receiving something because, yes, Pastor Ann can be funny. <laughs> but the amplified version, as I was saying, is taken from the Strong's Concordance, which breaks down the Greek and the, and the Hebrew to, you know, in the English, so you get the full meaning. So, and I, I like to use that to teach. So, I'm just saying, get what God wants you to get. If you have questions, ask questions. Because that's what we're here for. Don't need anybody to carry a, my, a briefcase because I don't carry a briefcase. <laughs> don't need anybody to carry my Bible. I carry my own Bible. In some, some churches, yes, they do that to honor them. That's great for them, but that's not how I operate. Amen. You know, you carry my own stuff. stuff. But I just, I don't know why I'm saying that, but God wants us to be real. Be real. This is how real Jesus was. When they came to arrest them, they didn't know who he was. So Judas said, the one that I kiss is, is Jesus. That's the one you need to arrest. And I thought about that. He didn't look like the priest. He didn't look like, you know, he had the, the best clothes out of everyone in his group. He just looked like everybody else. And I said, oh, I said, I said, I like that. I really like that. Because I'm not trying to stand out anyway. So just be who God called you to be. And, and guess what? Well, I'll tell you this. Sometimes, because they don't think you are who you are in the Lord, they will expose who they are. And you'll go and you'll say, oh, well, they need some help. They're not where they think they are. And guess what? Titles don't make you. Amen. You make the title. Amen. So, you know, just why well, I'm saying that either, but just just know just know that. Just know that. You can you can you can be you can have have a greater testimony you can bring it in. Okay. You can have a greater testimony by just being who you are in Christ versus trying to advertise, you know, that 
well, I'm this yep. and I'm that. That's what the Pharisees did. Yep. The publican did. He just the Pharisee said, you know, he's, he's, he told the Lord, he says, Lord, I just thank you that I'm not like this publican. I feed the poor. I've given alms. I've given money to folks. And then the 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 uh, the publican, which means tax collector, he was a tax collector. He said, he said, Lord, forgive me. You know, he's basically said, I'm a sinner. Lord, forgive me for what I've done. And Jesus said that he was that he was better off more than the Pharisee because the Pharisee got his reward by people seeing what he did. He could have done it behind the scenes and gotten a better result. But I, I just wanted to say that. And now for those of you we have three things. One is salvation if you don't know the Lord. Two is if you've been away from the Lord and you want to uh, get back with the Lord, that's our second invitation. The third invitation is if you would like to be part of this church, the doors of the church, they're always open. Amen? They're always open. Um, and we're not so traditional. You can come and talk to us after church. You know, we're not, like a lot of churches say, well, if you don't come right now, it's not going to happen. That's not what Jesus did. Whenever there was a need, he was available. Even on his way to minister to someone, he was available. When the man in the tree was saying, Jesus, he went and he ministered to him. And then he went and ministered to the man's daughter who was sick. So, there is no time limit for salvation. Salvation is available anytime. I just wanted to say that. Um, we'll have a corporate prayer at this time. So Father, we just thank you right now for the word that went forth. We thank you for the worship. We thank you for your presence. Lord, continue to minister to each and every one of us. Lord, every need, Lord, we declare it is met as we are obedient to you. Lord, you told us that if we love you, we'll keep your commandments. We'll keep your instructions. So, Lord, minister to everyone under the sound of my voice. Lord, bless those members who are not here, who happen to be working, that you keep them safe from any harm or danger. Because some have to travel away, some are in jobs where uh, they have to transport materials. And, and Lord, bless those who have to lift things and their job can be strenuous and tiring. Lord, we ask that you bless them, and because their jobs can be tiring, and they work a long time, Lord, bless them when they get off of work to pay attention on the road and protect them from reckless drivers and unattentive drivers till they return safely home. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Anybody who's sick, we declare you healed right now. If you want to come talk to us about anything, we're available. Then at this time, see, we already did the uh, announcement we're done earlier. Uh, however, uh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, the group that Pastor Ann and I we fellowship with, we usually rotate and have a New Year's service. We rotate between the churches.
that isn't going to happen this year. So we were invited to Pastor Swanigan's church. And uh, so there are going to be several churches coming together. And uh, he's going to, he said he's going to have uh, some of his young, you know, young ministers. Well, maybe some, not so young. But <laughs> not an age, but uh, straighten that out. <laughs> so you say, I thought he said they were young. <laughs> um, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna be speaking, and then he asked me to close it out, uh, you know, speaking. Amen. And so uh, you know, I just want to thank the Lord for that honor. But it's going to be the same place that uh, we've had the. Uh, the Sister Girls in Christ conference in where we're going to have our 25th anniversary celebration. Okay. Yeah. Amen. So, so I'm excited. I think the time, I'm not sure about the time. I forgot to ask, but I'll get that. It might be 9 o'clock. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I forgot to ask. So, but anyway, we'll, we'll let you know the time. I know we're going to have a, we'll have a good time uh, there. Um, so, let me see, at this time we'll get ready for our tithes and our offerings. Did I forget anything? Oh, and the other thing is, and I, it was probably in our announcement, is that we're going to go ahead and change the time of our service so it's earlier. First, first, first Sunday, which is the 7th of January. It will be 10.30 a.m. We will begin service at 10.30 to mm -hmm. 10.30? Not here. No, we can be at 10.30 here. <laughs> <laughs> Not here. But we're, it's going to be 10.30. So I'm looking forward to that. And uh, so now, let's see what we need to say. Are we have ushers already designated? Are we have ushers designated? Tiana and... Uh, no, uh, no, no, no. Tyree. 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 Tyree